The Bella family is just one of dozens of families in Kansas City grieving after their loved one was killed in a crash. It's a heartbreaking phone call the police have to make, and the number of calls they've made staggering. 71 traffic deaths in Kansas City just this year, according to police. A number well above what was made last year at this time, 49. In a story you'll only see here, 41 Action News reporter Andres Gutierrez goes on a ride along with Kansas City's traffic unit as they share their concern for drivers on the road. My heart fell into my stomach because I just couldn't believe it. Brianna Kwai will always remember Gabriel Valdez as a kind young man. They became friends after meeting in a class at William Christman High. And he just always made me happy. He made anybody else happy around him. On July 23rd, the 19-year-old had been riding in the bed of a pickup truck at the old Tiffany Springs Park. Some type of violent impact threw Valdez from the truck and onto the gravel road. Police weren't called. Instead, someone left him at a hospital. The Army National Guard recruit spent days in a coma before dying. You never know when somebody's life's going to end because of something stupid. Valdez would be the 62nd person to die this year because of a traffic crash. 2020 is on pace to be the deadliest on Kansas City, Missouri roads than in the last six years. Less motorists on the road, you would think that fatalities would go down, but that's not the case. Sergeant Grant Ruark with KCPD's Traffic Enforcement Unit notes the numbers reveal three big reasons. People are choosing not to wear their seatbelts, they're speeding, and in some cases, getting behind the wheel under the influence. You know, they always think that the fatalities happen on the highways and they can drive how they you know, want on city streets and not wear a seatbelt. That's not the case. The alarming rise in deaths is provoking action. Visibility itself helps. Us being out there and sitting on the side of the roadways and um, just being visible to motors helps curb speeds. A task the unit's 50 or so officers like Brian Kaiser tackle every day. Uh, you're at 81 and it's 65. Um, do you have your driver's license with you and some insurance? Give you a break on 81? It's 16 over. Drivers looking to make a deal with Officer Kaiser are common, as are their excuses. I'm running late or um, I'm keeping up with the flow of traffic is another one that's it's commonly heard. Like this one. I usually pay attention to what I'm doing. I got over to pass and I just lost track of it, to be quite honest. Two people going about the same speed as me right next to me, so I can't say, you know, I shouldn't be speeding either way. The pandemic hasn't helped anyone slow down. I think the general attitude is traffic is more open, so we leave a little later, go a little faster. But as the saying goes, it's better to be late than never. It's probably one of the most despised things to do on this police department. I mean, nobody wants to tell somebody else that their that their loved one has passed away from uh, either someone else that was driving aggressively or them them, them uh, themselves was was uh, driving aggressively. The crash that took Gabriel Valdez's life remains a mystery. No one has been arrested or charged. Police continue searching for witnesses. His friend wants justice, but also wants other drivers to be safe. Just to really think about what you do, because it did happen late at night. So you need to be more careful and think about what you're going to do, because that resulted in him losing his life. In Kansas City, Andres Gutierrez, 41 Action News.